Welcome back to Bluegrass this beautiful June afternoon. I'm out with Annie and Charlotte and Gracie. And what we're talking about today is the value of mentorship. Okay, so in this situation, I am serving as a mentor to Charlotte and Annie is serving as a mentor to Gracie. And the point we wanna really make today is that from our perspective, Although there have been some great inroads in dog training in the last few years, we feel that dog training uh, in the aggregate is kind of going in the wrong direction, where everybody's becoming too focused on their individual dog and expecting their individual dog to become too focused on them, right? You'll hear things like, I want to be the center of my dog's universe, or, you know, things like that, right? Okay, what we believe is that, you know, dogs, uh, they're social creatures, okay? And human beings are meant to be social creatures. So we want to encourage people to get out and uh, be social you know and so like the point of this video is that if you have the opportunity to take your dog who you've been spending a lot of time training and 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 socializing if you have an opportunity to take that dog out into your community and find someone who's struggling a little bit then I feel it's your responsibility to do so you know so like in this case um, this little dog here, her name's Gracie, and she's going to go home and she's going to live with uh, three little girls. And so we want to make sure that she's properly prepared to go home and live the lifestyle the, that, you know, three little girls live. But that's not enough for us. We want to send Gracie out into the world as an ambassador, okay, as an ambassador for dog training. Because we believe that if dogs, if all dogs just simply did nine things, the whole world would be better off. And what are those nine things? We need dogs to come when you call them. We need dogs to be still when you tell them. We need dogs to have good manners from the neighbor's perspective. We need dogs to start social situations off by being calm, attentive, and polite. And we need dogs to refrain from behavior that's dangerous, destructive, or rude. Okay, so uh, on the internet, what we see a whole lot is people complaining about other dog trainers, about uh, other people's dogs in their neighborhood, things like that. But what we don't see is a lot of people volunteering to be mentors. Okay, and so this video, uh, we're just demonstrating on the course kind of some specific skills that one might uh, need for their dog to be good and to be able to take them out in public, right, in this portion of the video. But we're just gonna kinda tag along, I'm gonna let Charlotte tag along with me as we're doing some maintenance around the kennel and show you that like you can be a great mentor just by integrating another person and another dog into your daily activities. We have some work to do here, so I come out and I say, hey Charlotte, will you help me, like, uh, you know, will you help me train my dog, I'll help you train your dog so we'll both be better off? Sure. Will the dogs be better off? Yep. Okay, now listen, I got some other stuff to do today. You wanna to tag along? Sure. Okay, all right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get out and we're gonna get some stuff done and we're all gonna learn by doing. I, in this situation, I know a little bit more, so Charlotte's gonna learn, right? And my dog knows a little bit more, so Gracie's gonna learn. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna turn Charlotte into an ambassador for good citizenship and I'm gonna turn Gracie into an ambassador for good citizenship and we're gonna end up with the 360 degree win. I'm gonna end up better off, Charlotte and Gracie are gonna end up better off and everybody that they come in contact with are gonna become, uh, end up better off. All right, so you guys can just hang out and watch us do some work and uh, we'll all be doing uh, some uh, awesome learning uh, through activities. All right, come on, you ready? Yeah. All right, good dogs, very nice. All right, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. I know a lot of you are thinking right now, Stoney, I just don't have time to be a mentor. Uh, guys, that's just not true. You have the same amount of time everyone else has. We all have 24 hours in a day. It's how we allocate that time that's what's important, okay? So for example, uh, I have to hook up this yard glide so we can haul some brush out back. Now, I could just tell Charlotte to wait over there while I hook this up. And I could tell her to wait over there while I pull over in the yard. And I could tell her to wait over there while I, I mean, I could, I have, there's always waiting to be done, okay? Or I can turn this into a 360 degree win. So I'm gonna show Charlotte how to use the four wheeler as an obstacle, okay? So I'm gonna be a mentor for Charlotte and then Annie's gonna be a mentor for Gracie and I'm gonna hook up the yard glide. And it's gonna take the same amount of time basically, okay? Only I'm accomplishing a whole lot more stuff. All right, Charlotte, I want you to watch what Annie does. I want you to let Gracie watch what Annie does and then I want you to do the same. So bring a Gracie over here. All right, so we're gonna position Gracie over here by the four-wheeler, right? And then I'm gonna call Annie. Come on, Annie. Up, up. Now, so you see what happened there. I walked over to the four-wheeler. I made an inviting gesture. My dog hopped right up on there. Uh, now, this dog likes to ride on a four-wheeler, so I don't have to give her a treat, but I'm gonna give her a treat because, like, I'm mentoring, right? Okay, now, Charlotte, you do the same thing and just keep practicing it. Or, you know what, how about this? Get her up there and then practice staying. Okay, because guys, listen, having a dog that stays when you're busy, <laughs> that's really a key to integrating a dog into your lifestyle. If, uh, 
if you have a dog and you know, like you can be at the boat ramp or you can be at the soccer game or you can be at the pizza parlor and you know for sure that uh, they're going to sit patiently, you know, they're going to be calm, attentive, and polite, then you're, you're, you're very likely to take them with you, you know. And the more that you integrate the dogs into your life, then the better the dogs are going to be. Now, I can kind of see what's going on here underneath this rack, and I see that Charlotte's struggling a little bit. Okay, guys, remember, when you're mentoring, you're mentoring. You're helping people learn how to do things for themselves. And right now, Charlotte is helping that puppy learn how to do something for itself. So every day when you're mentoring, okay, try to set it up so that you're helping, but you're not doing for. Because if I have to get off here and do that for Charlotte, uh, then I'm not going to get what I need to get done done. And the lessons that Charlotte and Gracie need to learn are not going to be learned. Okay. I can see kind of through here. It looks like Charlotte has managed to get Gracie up there. That makes me very happy. So I end up being a happy dad. Charlotte ends up being a happy dog trainer. Gracie ends up being a happy dog because she gets to be up there with her mentor, Annie. And uh, we're fixing to go out back and do fun stuff and run around, have big time adventures. All right. Okay, you ready to get some brush? Yep. All right, let's go. Very nice. Okay, now here, uh, you'll notice Charlotte just hopped right up on the four-wheeler. Uh, We like to, because in Kentucky, we do a lot of ATV riding, a lot of side-by-side -side work, uh, fix to get a new tractor, and I need these dogs to be acclimated to that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start to acclimate uh, Gracie to this ATV. Uh, now, Charlotte's kind of jumping ahead because she knows Annie knows how to, to ride on ATV well. What we'll do is we'll just do a little quick acclimation phase here. And what this shows you is that Charlotte's already thinking about, uh, about the next step, okay? Gracie's not quite ready for that. But what she is ready for is this right here. We'll just get her ready uh, to ride, get her used to that vibration, get her used to that noise. Very nice. All right, Charlotte, go ahead and rev it up a little bit. A couple more times. All right, okay. Now I'll get Gracie off and I'll let Charlotte walk her over so we can load some brush. And uh, then maybe tomorrow we'll actually start uh, letting Gracie ride on the back of the four-wheeler. Oh, you're a very smart dog. Very good. Okay, all right. Now, so when we go to get her down, uh, again, going down is always harder than going up. So you gotta kinda help them so they don't slide off there. All right, very nice. Okay, you can ride that four-wheeler and I'll take this one. I'll take your dog for a second. All right, so like always, you just never know when a good mentoring opportunity is gonna pop up. Uh, so I, I, Charlotte rides this four-wheeler some, but she's just now getting to where she's actually using it around the kennel for work. Okay, and so today she's going to learn how to back it up. And so Gracie's going to learn how to be careful around equipment, and Charlotte's going to ha learn how to uh, drive in reverse. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so give it just a little gas. There you go. There you go, keep going. Whoa! <laughs> All right. All right, now you're back to something that you're comfortable with. Okay, so look guys, this is how dog training works. You go from general to specific. So like with, with my children, they're around equipment all the time when they're young, you know, and then they just learn a little bit as they go. And so Charlotte's little four-wheeler, it only has go in the, you know, it only has drive on it. Now this one has reverse, right? And so I just had to give her some help in the reverse section. Now she's gonna go back to drive and then go over to the uh, brush on the wagon. So just hit the up arrow, hit it one more time. And you're off to the races. Very nice, guys. And that is the ultimate version of learning by doing. Okay, so we made it over to our trailer. Now on this trailer, we have some dirt, we have some mulch, uh, we have a lot of tools, and we have some debris. Okay, now, like around my place, we have a lot of trees, a lot of shrubs. We had a hard winter, and so, you know, every spring and summer, we have to go through and clear out all the dead. Uh, so, now I've got to get all this stuff like load it over here onto my yard glide so that I can take it out back. And then while I'm doing that, again, you know, like I could, I could ignore my daughter, I could tell my daughter to go play, I could give her a phone, you know, whatever, you know, but what's she, she gonna be learning anything. 
Okay, so I want my daughter to learn, and like if my daughter's learning, she might as well have a puppy tagging along learning too, right? Always think about that, guys. 360 degree winds. So like this, this right here, you wouldn't think about it, but this provides a perfect socialization opportunity for a young dog. If you go up north, a lot of the, you know, the stairs and and and, and grates and stuff, they're made out of various types of corrugated metal or extruded metal, right? So like if you see somebody with a with a landscaping truck. You know, ask them, say, hey, you know, could I, you know, could, would it be okay if I took my dog and like walked up and down your, your landscaping trailer? Nobody's going to care, you know. Hey, and then if you're going to take your dog and you're going to like walk it up and down a landscaping trailer, why not ask the kid next door, you know. Why not ask the elderly lady next door whose grandchildren haven't come and visited her, you know. Why not just ask anybody? You know, say, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go look for some socialization opportunities with my dog. You want to tag along? Hey, would you like to come over here and tag along while I work, right? I'm going to work and you can work. And Gracie can work and we can all have fun, right? Okay, so you're just going to kind of walk up and down the trailer there, okay? And as Charlotte is walking up and down the trailer, you can see, look at Gracie, she's a little bit hesitant. She doesn't know about, you know, like whether or not it's a good idea to get on that corrugated metal. And so Charlotte is going to learn how to talk to her. She's going to learn how to encourage her. She's going to learn how to reward her with proper timing. And if Charlotte starts having trouble, you know, she can call Annie over there. Look at Annie. Annie's going to crawl all over this trailer. And Annie will show, will show Gracie, you know, what's possible. Okay. Very nice. Now, once she starts to get comfortable, I'll clear you out a little spot there. And uh, you can make her stay up there. How about that? Let me get this dirt out of the way. Let me clear you out. Let me get a couple more limbs out. Oh. All right, so now I've almost got Charlotte a little spot cleared there so she can work on getting Gracie to stay. Now, as Gracie's learning to stay, then I want you guys to think about what all's going on, okay? There's lots of noises, okay? There's a ton of smells in these different kind of bushes. Uh, and uh, then I'm gonna probably accidentally whack them with some limbs <laughs> over time as I'm trying to get this stuff offloaded. All right, Charlotte, you feel like you, <laughs> then my dog's going to steal my sticks. Okay, I think you've got a big enough spot now. Get her right up here. Ask her to stay. There you go. So see if you can get her to sit and stay right there. Perfect. And then look, see how I accidentally, oh my gosh, I accidentally did something that's overly distracting. And she was able to do it. So I would click and treat right there. Very nice. Now, if you're wondering why I'm transferring these limbs from our big wagon to the yard glide, is because to go out back where it hasn't rained in a while, uh, if we take this big trailer, it's going to make big tracks through my yard, and I'm kind of yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of particular about my yard. I mean, I'm not as bad as some people, I guess, but. I have a tendency to like it to look a certain way, you know. All right. Now right here, her tail is kind of caught up in some of this brush. So as I go to pull on this brush, it's gonna pull on her tail. So you be ready to make her sit back down, okay? Ah, look, she did a great job. Very nice. Somebody must have been working with that dog. My own dog, <laughs> maybe not so much. Oh. All right. Okay, very nice. Now look, the yard glide is all loaded up and we're ready to head out back. Very good job, Charlotte. Very nice. Very good dog, Gracie. Okay, so you get your four-wheeler and I'll get my four-wheeler we'll head out back. Watch out, nerd. All 
Okay, so remember I told you I'm a little bit particular about my yard? <laughs> well, as we were hauling that brush out here, I noticed that it was pretty obvious I hadn't mowed this week, and so I ran back up to the house to get the mower. Uh, now, again, guys, you just have to take these kind of situations like this and not look at them as setbacks. Look at them as opportunities to win, okay? So uh, I'm going to do a little mowing so that you guys uh, don't see my unkempt yard. And while I'm doing a little mowing, uh, Charlotte is going to go uh, over to our small brush pile and do a little bit of brush pile acclimation and um, and while that's going on I'm gonna accomplish some mowing and also the dog's gonna get used to uh, being calm attentive polite and confident around equipment so that's super important all right so cameraman you and Charlotte can go over there to the brush pile uh, try not to get any place where I haven't mowed and I'll try to get this place cleaned up so we can continue the video all right you ready Charlotte good job All right, so it looks like Charlotte is doing a great job over here. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is like, you know, when I come up on this brush pile, even though all these logs are kind of, you know, they're, 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 they're pretty sketchy, <laughs> right? Look, look how I just climb right up here like an old mountain goat and how Annie climbs right up here like an old labra goat, right? And you'll watch Charlotte and Charlotte is just, uh, you know, she's a little bit uh, more hesitant. And you watch Gracie, she's a little bit more hesitant. Try to go over that way just a little bit. Okay, now this is the key to mentorship, guys. You have to be patient enough to understand that you're gonna do something pretty well, and whoever you're mentoring, uh, you know, they're on, the, they're on the come up, so they're not doing it quite as well. Okay, but do you do it better this year than you did it last year? Yep. Okay, well, as long as we're making progress, that's all that matters in dog training. So each week we just come out here and we try to take a few steps forward, and over the course of the year, you end up with a dog that's really, just really awesome, right? And if you're mentoring a, a child, you end up with a child that's really awesome. And then, so Annie is a mentor for Gracie. I'm a mentor for Charlotte. Charlotte and Gracie will be mentors for other people. And, and Gracie and her family will be mentors for people in their neighborhood, right? And it starts, it starts off looking a little shaky, but it always works out. Well, I have the yard cleaned up. Oh, I'm sorry, I pulled your hair. <laughs> uh, so that's learning by doing, right? I learned not to, to I don't have long hair anymore, so like uh, I don't pay, pay attention to the brush. But uh, we're gonna go over here, we're gonna get on the brush pile, uh, and uh, now that our yard's mowed, so we don't, uh, we don't look like bums. Hmm. All right, you ready? Head on over there. Come on, Gracie. Very nice. All right, let's go, guys. Good dogs. Okay, Charlie, you can kind of circle around here so I can pull up. All right, cameraman, if you can kind of come over here, we'll take a look at what we're doing. All right, for those of you familiar with my channel, you know this is the World Famous Brush Pile Challenge. This is where we take the proprioception drills from um, our uh, Exercise Small Challenges course and we transfer them to our pre-adventure area. And this is where like, we make our decisions as to whether or not a dog is ready to go on a real adventure out in the real world. So we have a whole big farm for that. Uh, now, again, getting back to this idea of a 360 degree win. Uh, world Famous Brush Pile Challenges do not maintain themselves. So every week I have to come out here and uh, add brush to it. But while I'm adding brush to it I might as well be mentoring and uh, making sure that uh, Charlotte is prepared to take over my job as I get older right uh, and make sure that all the dogs that are out here are ready to go on big-time adventures with their friends okay so huh, what makes the brush pile challenge 
uh, so difficult but also so valuable is because every week it changes, right? There's like different types of debris in here. All of it has different odors, has different textures. Uh, where you have to put your feet to maintain your balance changes from week to week. And there's lots of critters that live in here. And so again, you watch me come up here. I look like an old goat. You watch my dogs come up here. They look like goats. But new dogs, they really struggle. And new people, well, we just don't even let new people do this too much, right? But Charlotte, if you want to come over here, come around this way and I'm going to help you come up here. And you're just going to get Gracie up here and have her uh, kind of, she can, she can kind of mill around up there, but let's get her up there and see if we can make her stay. Now, you see right here, look, see where Gracie came? Okay, so you had to be careful. Go back there. She's not going to be able to come over that, that brush. There you go. And this is the part of mentoring where you guys, you know, you have to be super patient. A lot of times, a lot of times, like you're doing something, especially if you've done it a lot of times in a row, that you forget how much of a struggle it is for somebody new. So I'm gonna hold Charlotte's hand and let Charlotte start to work her way up the brush pile, All right? And then I will get Gracie and I will work her up the brush pile separately. There you go. Okay, now walk up that way a little ways. Be very careful with your foot placement and get to a place where you're pretty stable. I would go up north, more towards the apex of the brush pile and I'll get Annie here, or not Annie, but Gracie. Come on, Gracie. And then all you have to do is kind of wait patiently while I add this brush and keep, uh, keep Gracie up here. And basically what this is, guys, proprioception drill. We're teaching dogs to have good foot placement. Confidence drill. We're teaching her that like, if we ever think something's a good idea, then she should also think it's a good idea. Um, and another thing is developing patience because she's gonna get up here and I have things to do uh, and she's gonna get you know, bored and wanna leave and Charlotte's just gonna keep her from leaving. All right, Charlotte, just kinda, you know, kinda move around up there just a little bit, not so much that you fall down. And cameraman, you can probably back up a little bit here. There you go. And then I'm just gonna start stacking brush. Now, as I come up here, oh, of course, you know, the dogs are going to want to fidget and come over and see what I'm adding to the brush pile. Charlotte might, you know, slip and fall a little bit. Okay, but remember guys, adaptation comes from adversity. You want to, you know, you want to encourage people and dogs to get out and challenge themselves to do things that, you know, seem hard. Okay, because that's what ends up making you, you know, feel like you're, feel like you're capable of being a winner in life. You know, the one thing that all winners have in common is that, is that they believe in themselves, okay? Well, how is your dog ever gonna learn to believe in itself if it never does anything hard? How are your children ever gonna learn to believe in themselves if you never let them do anything hard? What about the children next door? They don't have any good mentors. What about them? And you might say, well, Stoney, it's not my business. Well, it is your business because you have to grow up, or well, I mean, you have to live in a community where those children are gonna grow up and they're either gonna be net contributors or they're gonna be net takers. So if you wanna live in a society full of contributors, then, you have to make sure you get out there and you model the behavior you want to see, okay? I hear lots of people give dog training advice, you know, but it seems like a lot of times those people are walking around in their driveways or they're telling you, you can zap your dog or you can spend five minutes a day training your dog and the dog is gonna grow up and be perfect. How much time do we spend training these dogs every day? Hours. Hours and hours and hours, okay? Because that's what it takes, guys, you know? And if you're gonna spend hours with your dog and you're gonna accomplish some good dog training, why not go ahead and make those hours as valuable as possible and do you some good community service, do you some good child rearing or help somebody contribute to some good child rearing, okay? And let's build communities 
that uh, are self-reliant and uh, you know pleasant to live in okay guys well that's pretty much the end of this video just wanted to talk to you a little bit about mentorship and a little bit about time allocation and really just encourage you to get out every day and look for 360 degree wins because responsible citizens turn into responsible communities all right i'll see y'all next week